Welcome back to another electro technology video and today we're going to look at how to make an extension cord. That's right. How do we put plugs and sockets on the end of a cable? Let's take a look. In this video, we're looking at how to create an extension cord. So how do we take the plugs and sockets and actually put them onto a circular piece of cable? Quite easy, you might think, but there are a couple of things to think about. So firstly, you need to have the right size cable. This is 1.5 millimeter square cross-sectional area, two core and earth, um, circular. It is light duty, it's not heavy duty. Um, the heavy duty is usually a bit thicker, doesn't fit so well on some of the plugs and sockets, so you've got to be mindful of that. So this is light duty. Um, I'm going to strip this back and I'm going to show you how to do it. When I get my plugs and sockets and they come in packets like this, yeah, uh, most of the time when you open them up, they'll give you a bit of a guide on the back on how to do it. So you really can't get it wrong. And there we go there. So on the back of this guide here, I was upside down. Here we go, right? On this guide, this actually shows me how long I need to strip the cable back um, and how to actually wire it all up, right? And as you do this over the years, you'll actually get really good at this as electricians and you won't need this anymore. You'll just get to the point where you know how long it is. But for this demonstration, I'm actually gonna go through and do it exactly as if you were doing this for the very, very first time. So each one will have that on it. Now, a plug and socket have different lengths. That's really important, okay? Don't grab one and go, all right, yep, I'm gonna strip two ends of my wire, my cable, I should say, that length, because they're not, they're actually different, all right? Again, upside down. <laughs> there we go, okay? There are two different lengths, so you need to be mindful of that. On top of that, the orientation of the wires in the actual cord is different on each end. And you need to be mindful of that too, because otherwise when you put it on, it's gonna twist, and it's not gonna be the way you want it. So the general rule of thumb is if you are looking, if I take the plug for example, take it all out, here is my plug, here are my three pins. Now depending on what country you're in, obviously this is gonna be different. This is for Australia, that's where I'm currently working. So if I'm looking at it this way, if I'm looking from behind, okay, my active terminal is here. This is my active. So that means when I look at my wiring, then my wiring, my active must match up with that terminal. And the same thing happens on the socket. So I need to be mindful of which end I'm stripping how long. So I'm going to start with the plug. Okay, so I will take my guide and I'll put my cable up against my guide, so that way I know the correct length, and it is about there. Now, when I do this, I'm gonna use my retractable knife, and I want to take the outer sheath of this cabling off, but I don't want to cut through into the inner insulation. I don't wanna cut through, definitely don't wanna cut through into the copper. So. The way I do it is I basically mark my cable around. I kind of score it. I put a little indentation and then I'm going to bend that cable around. And what will happen is where my indentation or my scoring is it will just break apart. And that way I'm not cutting directly into the inner insulation because otherwise that become a safety problem if I start doing that. So let's see how we go with that. and off it should come like that. Perfect. That should be the correct length. If I check it, excellent. That is almost spot on. 
Probably needs a t little bit of a trim, but that's perfectly fine because I need to now strip these wires. But before I strip these wires, there is one really, really important thing I must now do. I need to make sure I put on the cover for the socket. So first of all, I have this lock ring that goes on, then the outer cover or outer sheath, protection, whatever you want to call it, goes on. So now that's in place. So now when I put this on, or when I strip back my wires, I should say, they're not going to get frayed when I'm trying to put this on. So now I just need to strip these back. There we go. And now I've got them stripped back. Obviously, I'm going to twist them. Now, this is flexible cord, which means it is different from the other cabling we might use when we're wiring up buildings or houses, etc. And the colors are different for starters. So in Australia, we look at uh, our wiring. The wiring in buildings is black for neutral, red for active, okay, and green with the, uh, with the yellow stripe for earth, obviously. In a flexible cord, the international standard is that your blue is neutral and your brown is active, and then obviously your earth is the same. So keep that in mind. When you're doing this, you're going to come across different colors. There we go. Now I've nipped them off. In fact, that needs a little bit of trim. There we go. So they are trimmed. They're stripped back. Now, when I put them onto the plug, Normally, if it was just a single wire, we would, fold, we would um, strip the cable, we would twist it and then fold it over. But these terminal strips are so small, um, you are not going to be able to fit this wiring in if you fold it over. So unfortunately, they have to stay just the way they are. Now I put that into the clamp and then I'm going to tighten that up with my screwdriver and then I'm going to put it through what's called the torturous path and that is essentially just a way of putting the wire around so that it can't come out at a later stage when it's being pulled on tugged and thrown about on the job site so I'm going to do that and put all those on so you can see the active just goes in there like that there we go and then I take my screwdriver and I just tighten that up like so. Then I do the same thing for my neutral, which goes into that one there. Tighten it up. Now, you will notice that I've done that, and the wiring, and this is what I was talking about before, okay, matches up. So my active comes across, matches that pin. My neutral, if I spin that around, there we go. My neutral matches up to that pin. So it lines up. So when I do the torturous path, that will focus, there we go. Then I put it around this part of the plug, and pull it up and it should fit. And then what happens is on the other side, there we go, other side, the same thing. Just like that. So what will happen is now this will sit nice and neatly once I put the earth on. It'll sit nice and neat in the right spot like that. And generally to get the last one on, I might have to use my screwdriver. So I might take my screwdriver and just lever it across like that. And there we go. Perfect. And now all I need to do is bring up the outer, outer sheath 
or the protective cover. And to get this on, what I need to do is, again with my screwdriver, I need to bring my screwdriver in there and lever it up. So like that, and bring it over the top, whoops. There we go, you can see that. It is fiddly, but you get the idea. When you are doing this, please, please be mindful where your hand is so that you don't put your screwdriver through your hand because that kind of hurts. And I have done it myself a couple of times, so please, please keep that in mind. Okay, that is now almost there. You may have to just wiggle around and work your way all the way around the circumference of the plug until it's sitting nice and neat. And then once we have that done, we bring up the locking ring, tighten that locking ring up, like that. There we go, that is the plug. Note, when you're looking at the plug, there should be very little distance between the plastic insert there uh, and the outer insulation. So realistically, if you can see all of these colored wires all the way up past the locking ring, then it's incorrect. It needs to be nice and tight so it can't move anywhere. And as you can see, it's all nice and neatly inside that plug in the correct order. So now all we have to do is repeat the exact same process at the other end using the socket. Uh, the only difference now being is that the wiring will be slightly shorter when I strip it back. Again, I'm just gonna start this one. I'm gonna put my locking ring and the outer sheath cover, whatever you wanna call it, on first, slide it down, and away I go. Let's do this. There we have it. One extension cord, plug and socket both attached. Now you can tell whether you've got this correct or not by putting your extension cord together and you should then be able to see that your colors all match up. So your active should match up with your active, neutral and earth should all match up. Um, here in Australia, all plugs that have not been molded from a factory, so that means any plug that has to be put on after the fact, have to be clear so that you can clearly see that all the correct cores are in their correct places and line up. That's just a requirement here in Australia. Maybe different in other countries. I would like to think that it's not because good way to check, okay? If you are totally unsure, you can always get your multimeter. You can put your multimeter on. You can do a continuity test between each uh, of your cables, each of your wires, and that will tell you then which ones are which, so you can always do it that way too. But there we go, that is it. So I hope you have learned how to now make an extension cord. It's a very easy task, uh, but it's one that we do fairly often, maybe not so much the cord, but definitely changing plugs. We have to do that quite often if you're out on construction sites or in heavy industry. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please, please like and subscribe, do all those things, and I'll see you next time.